have I got black nose? So much black nose. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're back in the tent, finally, after doing the discovery, uh, where we took the pass pump and the water pump and some interior parts out. Um, you can check that video out up here. Um, today, we want to carry on and actually get this chassis stripped all the way back, so it's just rolling. Going to roll it outside and give it a jet wash, so we can give it a final inspection and find out what we need to do before we start treating it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is move this manual and then we're going to drop this fuel tank right down so we can get at all the fuel lines and start stripping them back as well. Whilst Lewis has been undoing the fuel tank, I've taken off the fuel filter and the fuel lines from here. The fuel tank is now loose. Um, fuel filler next just come off and we're gonna see if we can lift it out. So this bracket or brace went over the top of the fuel tank. Um, it was just two bolts into here and two on the other side. Remove that. Um, it still felt a bit tight in there um, so on the front there's this base which is holding the fuel tank from going down um, and protecting it there were two bolts on the front one there and one over here I loosened them off which gave it a bit of room to move and then we just lifted the tank out and I'm stuck and during the removal process we managed to spill about five litres of fuel all over the floor so we now have a flammable tent um, but the remainder we managed to get into a bucket which is about as safe as it on the floor. Moral of the story guys empty your tank before you remove it. So to remove the rest of this carrier um, there's access holes at the back for two 15 mil socket sized nuts and I doubt you can see right in but um, our ones are completely rusted. It took multiple sockets to remove the rust and eventually find that it was a 15 um, that could undo it. They're very stiff because of the rust, but it is slowly coming off. Uh, and those two should um, end up releasing this. So what I've just been doing um, is removing the fuel lines. Um, the fuel lines are attached along the top of the chassis. Um, fuel filter sits here. Um, so they've come off now. I'm going to start. I've started undoing this brake line here. Need to disconnect it from the rear axle, uh, disconnect the front axle over there, and then the brake line should come out. And following that, I think I'll start taking the exhaust off. So, managed to get the um, brake system off here. Actually, all came off quite nicely, unlike certain other things. Um, so, that's another thing off. Alright guys, so I'm trying to take the steering box off now. Um, I believe that these nuts um, go through the chassis and hold the box on the side. It's obviously also linked to the steering down below um, and the steering shaft up there. Uh, so these were some pretty tight uh, nut, uh, bolts here. I had to break them off with a breaker bar, um, but now they're coming off easily enough and I think they go right through into the housing. All right, so what I've done is you saw I took the four large bolts out of the chassis that hold the steering box in place here. Now it's held at the, bo uh, at the bottom of this bracket here with a 34 mil bolt. I don't have a 34 mil um, socket, only 32. Um, so my plan is undo this here separate this ball joint, undo these two bolts here on this bracket here, and then hopefully it will come in with this drop arm attached. So 
steering box is out. There it is over there. Uh, as you can see, a fair few steering components are still on it that we didn't particularly want. Uh, but as I said, we don't have a 34 mil socket here. Um, so steering is just sort of dangling now. Um, but it has meant that this area is freed up so we can clean it up. Fortunately, due to our power steering fluid links, area is really, really uh, well preserved, unlike the rest of it. So we'll carry on getting the last few things off, probably pull the car out after that and, and give it a jet wash. So I've been taking the exhaust apart bit by bit. The downpipe separates just before the silencer here. You've got two 17 mil socket um, with nuts. So you need a 17 mil spanner as well as a socket. Um, and now I'm working my way back to the next section, which is the silencer. And same thing applies. I've taken one out already. And you can see there I've got a 17 mil socket and spanner. On this back section, it's 17 mil again. You can see the socket and the spanner, but in fact, this is um, three bolts and nuts. So I thought there was only two and I couldn't get it apart. Turns out there was another one underneath, which I'm removing. So I've got the front prop off. Uh, you think you might, we might have learned from our errors before um, and actually bought the correct Imperial tool to get it off, but no. Uh, so just, taken it off with uh, 14 mils it's a bit of a pain when you don't have the right tools but front one off onto the back one all right so we have just managed to get the uh, tow bar assembly off heavy juicy bit of kit that is um, did battle with the bolts the whole way but we're making some pretty good progress if you look down the chassis now there's nothing really left on it those cables to the side are completely loose and all of the brake lines are off all of the power steering lines are off so we should be getting pretty close to sort of pulling it out and giving it a clean up this mud flap I'm gonna take off now and just try and get these handles off the rear cross member as well and then we're going to be in a position where we uh, give it a jolly good clean up and inspect. nipped out to the shop to get a few provisions um, we've got some degreaser here because when we jet, wa jet wash the chassis um, there is a lot of oil and grease particularly up the front end uh, that even the jet wash wouldn't get off um, got some driveway cleaner because we're creating some kind of ecological hazard in the driveway here um, and some brushes and sponges so we're going to carry on cleaning it up but it has cleaned up pretty nicely there is definitely surface rust but in general it looks quite good
Okay, so we have just uh, finished. We cut, covered it in degreaser and then gave it another wash off. Uh, the degreaser did a pretty good job. Um, so having a look at it, it's not bad. It's not good, but it's not bad. Um, there is plenty of surface rust on it, um, but the main areas of concern are right here on the top of this rail here it's completely blown out potentially from the inside it runs up to here um, it's similar on this side but not even nearly as bad it's sort of starting to go but might be savable there um, and then on the back we've got a bulge here which you can't really see on camera but it's started to bulge along here Similarly, on the other side, it's very slightly bulging. Um, now, the rear cross member, which is a typical place for them to be pretty grotty, is okay. It's not brilliant, but it's clearly taken a few whacks in its life. Here you can see it's dented down. Here is the jacking point, which is also bent down. And here you can see all of the different layers of the steel have started to separate. Now, whether that's a problem to the point that we need to replace metal, I'm not sure. Um, here it's pretty crusty, but actually seems to be just mainly along the welds. So with a good grind and clean up, again, it may be savable. So from what we can see at the moment, it's not great, but it's not bad. I think it's savable, um, but we will know more when we actually start grinding it back and investigating the bare metal. All right, guys, there we go. Problem Smash. solved. Yeah, managed to bend the jack point back up into place. Um, that may be not a good thing if it was that easy to do, um, but we can always strengthen it and support it with a bit of metal. guys we're gonna wrap it up there today make sure to hit the uh, subscribe button and if you want to see more regular updates head over to our instagram channel cheers, cheers.